Harbor Freight item number 5655, a multi-purpose vise, which is actually a great vise. Uh, they still sell one that's similar. This model number is discontinued, but they still sell one that's similar. And it's nice and heavy duty, and it's got this unique feature that you can rotate the jaws around, and at the top, you can hold round pieces, like that between the two jaws. Uh, and you can rotate things to the side, so if you have a long bar that needs to be held vertically off the table, off the edge of your table, you can do that. So there's a lot of really good things about this vise. Uh, it weighs something like 70 pounds and it costs about a dollar a pound, which is very cheap considering how much machining and finishing had to be done on it. The downside, of course, is the subject of this video. So I've had to, well, it's a little hot and still been welding on it. I had to do some stainless steel, use some stainless steel rod. I know I'd, I should be using nickel rod, but the downside is this thing is cast iron and it broke this dog here, which aligns the shaft on the, on the vise here with a slot in the jaw here so that when you tighten them they don't slip and so that they stay in alignment but it leaves this one cast iron part um, a little bit flimsy you know if that were cast steel that would have been fine if they could change one thing about the spice and maybe they have it'd be to make this one part cast steel instead of cast iron I'm trying to take it back together I've never done cast iron before so I've, I've preheated it with the propane torch then I started hit it with the TIG welder got it in alignment and tacked it and started going at it with the stainless rod I mean normally you'd use steel rod like this so I'm going at it with stainless and hoping that's got enough nickel content to be the right stuff in any case I'll just go buy another vise if this doesn't work maybe I'll just treat this vise gently um, I've actually been able to use it uh, pretty tough I've used the anvil which I've always worried about cracking because of the cast iron so I haven't been too tough on that anvil but I've used the vise to crush stuff and to break things apart and it eventually broke when I put a cheater bar on it, was trying to crush a piece of aluminum. Okay, you got the TIG welder set to just about 250 amps. It's more than I need, but that's what I'm using. Another tip for TIG welding is get comfortable. So if you're fighting this this way, like you can see I'm fighting this this way, that's gonna you're gonna have a hard time welding if you're not comfortable. So the best advice I ever got was get comfortable. So really hard to weld down in that crack there. You see burning off there is just the grease that was on the thread. So put grease on the threads. So really crude welds. I'm using stainless rod onto cast iron, and who knows what grade cast iron it is. It's out of China. Uh, so I've tigged it around, and I've a little hard to see down there, but I've built up a lot of material. It used to be sharp down there in the joint between the two, and now I've built kind of a gusset between the two, and I've already kind of notched this part with a grinder to fit and I'll have to do have to do the same along the length of this shaft on this sharp edge here to make them fit
That ought to fix the interference. First, I don't want to get any of that dust down in there where the grease is and get it all stuck. Make it into a grinding effect. Another note about grinding. Grinding is really handy. These uh, grinding wheels remove a lot of material. If I didn't have a milling machine with the sign plate or some other fixture set up that I could grind or cut away the, the chamfer that I needed, this comes in pretty handy. It's 15 bucks from Harbor Freight with a few dollars for the wheel. It's not a flap disc, it's just a grinding wheel. It removes lots of cast iron dust. It was spread all, all over this place, all over the cables. Probably getting into that pump. Uh, and that's a vacuum pump. I don't. I should probably just tape over that port, but it's going to be getting into all of my my precision linear rails, which is why I hate grinding in the shop. This ball screw is exposed, so any dust. Well, that's mostly on my hands. Down here in the spindle, which is exposed right now, so I really don't like grinding dust. I mean, it's not good for engines. It's not good for just about anything I've got sitting in this garage. I guess these two machines can handle it. So I'm kind of meticulous when it comes to sweeping up my dust and then I orient my work so that sparks go in one direction or another good thing to do is if you're grinding and sparks are going that way to set something in the way and it actually the sparks will bounce off and just stop there for the most part. Alright it's back together I hit it with the wire wheel after doing the welding this is a little bit burnt and you can see that uh, everything still seems to work. So, pins all the way around. A little tight there, I'm going to loosen this up just a tad. There we go. I got some warpage in welding and the yoke here. So, the device is not as good as new, but it's enough to be able to gently clamp stuff. Gently meaning I can clamp it pretty stiffly. I'm sure I can clamp it with a bit of force. At least now I can use my vise again. You can kind of see where that's going, right? I'm not going to tighten that up too hard. Too hard. I'm going to tighten it up where the part doesn't move and I can do a little bit of welding on it. If I want to use it this way, I can use it. Or if I want to use it this way, I can use it. This is what I really love about this kind of vise. Otherwise, I'd just go with the square one, uh, which they have an 8-inch heavy-duty square one, which is only a few dollars more than this. But uh, I like this particular vise. Just wish they had made a little more consideration for the design when they started. But that's Chinese versus um, three times the price. Hard to complain about it when I keep going back to buy it.